Welcome back to another video everyone, this is Coaster Daddy, and today I am going to be taking a look at all of the standout drops, in my opinion, that I've experienced on roller coasters. I will list a few honorable mentions that I believe are worthy of noting, as well as doing my best to rank my 10 favorite drops from worst to best. As is the case with any list, these are extremely difficult to rank, and they can and will change over time. But as it currently stands, in May of 2020, these are in my opinion the best drops of any roller coasters that I've personally experienced. Before jumping into the list, just a quick reminder, if a coaster is not on this list, it's because I most likely have not ridden it, or if I have, I just don't think it had an awesome enough drop to make the cut. Let's get to the honorable mentions. Thunderbolt at Kennywood actually has two fantastic drops. It has a 70 foot drop right out of the station and a 90 foot drop at the end of the ride, which is actually the largest on the ride. And that's because of the way this ride is situated in the terrain. It really uses the ravine to its advantage. Vortex at Kings Island is the only defunct coaster that I'm featuring in this video. And although it didn't make the list proper, Vortex actually had a very awesome and impressive 138 foot drop in my opinion. It's the first drop of the ride. It was by far my favorite part of the ride actually. I wasn't a huge fan of this ride overall, it just didn't really do a whole lot for me. But I definitely did enjoy that drop. And I felt like it was worth mentioning, at least as an honorable mention. Mystery Mine at Dollywood. Actually, the last drop on Mystery Mine is a 75 foot, 95 degree drop indoors. It's very intense and it actually spirals a little bit. So it has a good whip to it, has some good airtime. It really just took me by surprise. This was a really good drop. Banshee at Kings Island is a really intense Bolliger and Mabillard inverted coaster, and it has an amazing, really steep 150 foot first drop, and it also doesn't have the pre-drop like the older B&M inverts have, so you just go down with really good speed, like I said it's really steep, it's just a really fun drop. And the last of our honorable mentions just barely got edged out of the proper top 10 list. This is Skyrocket at Kennywood. In my opinion, this is a really underrated Premier Ride Skyrocket launch coaster. There is an amazing pop of ejector air over the top of the hill after you get launched and then you go straight down about 90 feet. And it's just a really good, underrated, really fun ride with some really good airtime. And that first drop especially, you get insane ejector going over that top hat. It's very cool. Starting off the list proper, we have an oldie but a goodie. This is Gemini at Cedar Point. Gemini opened in 1978, and in my opinion, this is an underrated ride and also a very underrated drop. Why is this one of my favorite drops on a coaster? Well, it's 118 feet, so it's pretty good size. Every single time I ride Gemini, my breath is just taken away by this drop, and it also has an amazing head chopper, one of the best head choppers I've ever experienced on the first drop as well. No matter how many times I ride it, Gemini is always a really fun, breathtaking first drop. Number 9 is Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. I've been on 3 RMCs to date, and although this is by far the smallest RMC that I've been on, this actually has the best drop out of all the RMCs I've experienced. You get awesome airtime as you're rolling down that 109 foot barrel roll down drop. It's just really unique, a really different sensation compared to the typical straight down drop. Of course, it's very, very smooth being an RMC. For those reasons, Twisted Timbers is definitely a top tier drop in my opinion. Number eight is Voyage at Holiday World. Now, I have to say, it's been five years since I've been to Holiday World. I don't remember this all too well. I definitely need to get back to Holiday World and experience this again. But Voyage has a humongous 154 foot 66 degree drop, has great floater airtime. Although, I don't remember it the best. Otherwise, it might be a little bit higher on this list. At number 7 is another gravity group, Monster, Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This first drop has amazing floater air in the back, and it's also pretty big for a wooden coaster drop as well. Even though the lift hole is only 80 feet tall, it has a 118 foot first drop that also twists to the right, and as I said, sit in the back for the best experience on this drop. Number 6 is Top Thrill Dragster, actually the second biggest drop in the world. 
It's a super long 400 foot drop and it spirals as you're going down, which is really fun. You get good airtime, and of course it has the Intamin T-Bar, so you're just very open, and there's nothing really that feels like it's restricting you. I think if you could actually feel the drop more, and it was just like a straight down drop that just kind of twisted back to the left, it might be a little bit better, but I really appreciate Top Thrill Dragster for its very long, unique drop, and I always have a blast on this. I am glad they did decide to include the twist in the final design. At number 5 is another Intamin. This is Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Now, this is not as highly ranked as the other Gigas in terms of the drops, because even though it has a 300 foot drop, it actually felt a little bit shorter than that to me. It actually to me felt more of like a very large scale hyper drop, but because it's coming in at number 5 on this list, it's still an extremely impressive drop, 300 feet, and you get really good ejector airtime on it. That is stifled a little bit because instead of the classic Intamin T-bars, you do have the soft over the shoulder restraints, which are not bad by any means. They're good restraints, but they do inhibit the airtime a little bit, but the ejector airtime on the drop is still very good nonetheless and it's my number 5 favorite drop. At the number 4 spot is another really intense coaster. This is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood, and this is actually not the first drop on the ride. Phantom's Revenge actually has a super long and intense second 228 foot drop into the ravine. It goes right under Thunderbolt, and it provides a very good head chopper. And this drop is just so intense. When you get to the bottom of that drop, the G-force there is just insane. This is one of the most intense drops I've experienced, and it's really incredible. Not really like anything else I've experienced either. Coming in at the number 3 spot is a drop that is a whole lot shorter than Phantom's Revenge, but it really packs a punch. This is Maverick at Cedar Point, an Intamin Blitz coaster that opened in 2007. The abrupt ejector that you get over the first hill, it just absolutely flings you out of your seat, especially if you're in the back. It's only a 100 foot drop, and it's 95 degrees so it's beyond vertical, but because of how compact it is, it just leads to this crazy, whippy, intense experience. I did consider putting this a little bit higher, and it was very tough to decide where I should place it, but I do believe it deserves this awesome spot on my list. The number 1 and 2 spot were very difficult for me to decide on because they're almost interchangeable, but ultimately, I did decide on Fury 325 at Carowinds, the Bolliger and Mabillard Giga Coaster, as the number 2 drop that I've experienced. This first drop just feels like you're falling forever. It has great ejector airtime as you have those awesome B&M clamshell restraints that give you a lot of room. It's a 320 foot drop at 81 degrees. And like I said, it just feels like you're going and going and going. It's like it never stops. It's just such an awesome experience. And it never gets old no matter how many times you ride this ride. But what is the drop that ultimately pushed Fury 325 out of the number one spot? Well, it would be the legendary Giga Coaster known as Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This is not my favorite Giga that I've been on. Actually... It's my least favorite out of the three gigas I've experienced so far, but it's an incredible ride, and that first drop is just so good. I believe you should sit in the first seat of Millennium Force to really experience the drop for what it is. You can really feel that length. It's a very long 300 foot drop at 80 degrees. It has amazing ejector air because of those classic Intamin T-bar restraints once again. So you just get flung out of your seat, especially if you're in the back. But as I mentioned, I do believe the front seat is the best so you can really feel that drop and just feel the wind rushing in your face. It's such an amazing drop. And I do believe it deserves to be listed at the number one spot as far as my favorite drops go. So what do you guys think of my list? Be sure to let me know what your favorite drops you've experienced are and why you think they're the best. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram, and I will see you guys next time. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.